Hello and welcome back to Gamer's Remorse. Today we're taking a look at Shadows Over Normandy. Echo. Echo. Nine. Wiener Schnitzel. Mm. Point in time. I don't know. Anyway, let's talk about this, shall we? Uh, first and foremost, it's you know World War II mythos using the heroes system. Yep. Um, you know, Heroes of Normandy came out before this. I think maybe a couple years ago. Ish. Uh, and this one was kickstarted uh, last year, I think. Um, and Yellow is distributing it here in the U.S. Um, maybe other places. And uh, yeah. I you have three basic factions. I don't even know why I'm describing it because I'm gonna yeah, you, explain it in the preview. The, the explosions so, in the preview, yeah. Yeah. So let's hop into our rubric. Uh, well, I guess unless you guys wanna, I'm just winging it this time. I don't know. I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> so gameplay uh, overall, I, th I think it played well. I mean, it was once you got through the basics of the rules and all of the iconography, mm -hmm. it was a fairly simplistic game. You know, mm -hmm. the hero system is pretty simple. You know, at maximum you roll two dice, take the higher of the two value, add on your additional points, subtract mm -hmm. any modifiers. Okay, that's yeah. your value compared against the defense of the other player. Mm -hmm. Simple. Yeah. It's typical war game. Yeah. You yeah. roll dice, you add modifiers, Yep. you, you find an outcome. Yeah, 50% of the game is maneuvering the right units in the right location to take advantage of the weakness of another tactical unit. Yep. Fairly simple. But it's a tried and true uh, mechanic, mm -hmm. right? So I gave it 1.5 out of two. I think it played very well. Um, some of the detractors were the number of icons you mm -hmm. had to kind of play through. But once you got familiar with a unit, you really understood how to utilize them, you yeah. know? There were certain units that were particularly bad at maneuvering and other ones that just had amazing skills that, you know, the, uh, the assault ability, for mm -hmm. instance, you know, running up and meleeing another person, you got to roll two dice plus a plus two modifier for the deep ones. I mean, it just seemed like a game yeah. that worked very well for that. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what are you guys' thoughts? I, I would agree on all counts. I, I think that I haven't played Heroes of Normandy, so I, I feel like had you played uh, Heroes, this might become a lot easier oh, uh, yeah. jumping right into. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, I, it took me some time to kind of figure it out, uh, but once I, I learned it, it, it did uh, snowball very quickly into mm -hmm. uh, the learning curve. Um, uh, I'm also very prone to playing things, uh, uh, other games, uh, uh, army-based, uh, you know, point-based armies. So, the, the gameplay for me was uh, pretty high, uh, just adding my two cents. So. Mm -hmm. And I've heard this game described as uh, a war game in a box, you know? Mm -hmm. Instead of buying a 150 point army, you know, and painting each of the miniatures, you have, you know, these chip tokens that you maneuver mm -hmm. around a board. Yeah. So, 1.5? 1.5? Uh, yeah, I mean, mine was probably about 1.75, but I can agree with 1.5 uh, and a uh, barrier of entry. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, style, what do you think about br that, Brian, as the uh, graphic designer yeah. in the house? Uh, the artwork, I thought, was really good. I really liked the artwork. They had a very good art style that fit the time period. Uh, the iconography, once you understood it, mm -hmm. it was very beneficial. Mm -hmm. There's a barrier of entry in that you have to figure out what all these icons mean. But once you know it, I'm like, oh, it's really helpful. Uh, I haven't checked the geek yet, but I'm guessing someone has already made an awesome iconography guide. If there isn't one, someone should. Because if each player had a little guide that showed all the icons, that would make it even that much better. We're looking at you, Brian. Well, I'm here. Yeah, no. I'm also looking at you there. <laughs> Snap. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, th I thought the art was great. Uh, the icons worked well once you understood them. Mm -hmm. Each faction has its own symbol that I thought was really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, all in all, I mean, I would say it's, it's a good one and a half. There's some room for improvement on making the iconography more understandable. Mm -hmm. what, what they represent. But that, those were my only my only thoughts. Do you guys agree or disagree? So, I actually gave it a two. I like okay. the icons as they are. The only thing is maybe there's more icons than what I would like, but then that's more mechanics and mm -hmm. ease of learn sort of a score. I gave it a two, and here's why. Everything that you said, plus some of the cards. At mm -hmm. the end, we were looking at some of the, the artwork on mm -hmm. the cards, you know, where they had uh, propaganda mm -hmm. type yeah. things. Awesome. Yeah. 
that just adds to the theme, it adds to the richest, richness of the game. That's why I gave it a two. What, what are your thoughts? Uh, I gave it a two as well, uh, mainly because the icons, I liked the icons. It was just more the rule book describing the icons was the, the difficult part. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the icons themselves, so. Right. Uh, I, I gave it a two, uh, just based on that. So, mm -hmm. uh, on top of everything else. Mm -hmm. So, I think you're overruled. You know what? I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know in the comments below. Do you agree with me or with these guys? <laughs> these guys. All right. Uh, and pacing, Eric. What do you think of that? Um. Well, the first game, like, it, it took quite a while just because we, it was the first time jumping in, uh, yeah. not really knowing. Um, but, like, once you actually learned, like, uh, what uh, each unit does, uh, the movement limits and everything, it actually went fairly quick. Uh, mainly because uh, you're allocating uh, command points. So, uh, I mean, there are only uh, a certain number of uh, units that will be acting. Mm -hmm. um, so... It, it actually rolled fairly quickly, um, I, so I think the pacing went really fast, uh, and uh, even uh, uh, with like AP players, like I don't think there would be a lot just because uh, so much will change. Mm -hmm. So, and I mean that first scenario we played was probably an hour and a half game mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. and set up before that and discussion before that. Mm -hmm. The very next game was maybe a half hour. Yeah, maybe I think it was twenty. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so once you figure it out, yeah. once you're over that hump, it goes really fast. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a fairly simple game. Yeah, so. and th there's room to expand it. I um, mean, you can spend as much time as you want creating your armies uh, once you start doing custom True. armies and everything. Mm -hmm. But, you know, once you start playing, because it's you take an action, the other person takes an action. Mm -hmm. And because it's always back and forth, there's not a lot of downtime. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think this game really comes through, is you're not sitting here just waiting on someone else. Right. I thought that, that played very well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what did we give it for pacing? Oh, uh, out of what? Out of one? One. one. Uh, I give it a point seven five. Mm -hmm. That's where I was at. You know what? I gave it a one, mm -hmm. but I've already been overruled once, so I'm just gonna, <laughs> we're good, point seven five. <laughs> Why are you even on this show? Why are you even on this show? You're on an Eric show. <laughs> I know, right? Gosh. Man, I'm out of here. <laughs> All right, well, I tell you what, you can tell us about theme. How's that? Okay, I will tell you about theme. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so, thematically, I thought this was done very well. Um, mm. My favorite, my two favorite games are Arkham Horror and Eldritch Horror. So you probably realize I already like the Cthulhu mythos. Um, and so I was excited to see Heroes of Normandy merged with Cthulhu. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I thought they did it fairly well. This idea that, you know, it's an alternate history, which I really enjoy alternate histories as well. And, you know, you have, they're trying to like summon, you, you actually have some of these beasts, you know, like Star Spawn and stuff like that. They get into the game and you're trying to like flank a Star Spawn with a Panzer. And so, so I just thought that worked really well. Mm -hmm. Like it adds an element that just, not, not to say it makes war fun, but it's just, <laughs> it's, it's a fun play on history, I guess. Right. Uh, so I, mean, I, I gave that one and a half out of two. Uh, there were elements where I, I felt like they could have fallen back even further on the theme. Mm -hmm. uh, they could have even had you know a bit more different characters from different countries playing in. Some oh, of that, that would be cool. Uh, some, some of that fun stuff. But yeah. I mean, there are a plethora of Kickstarter expansions right. that can be merged with it that just adds so much more. I have yet to play with the not Hellboy expansion. <laughs> I believe it's called Devil Boy. Devil Boy. Uh, yeah. You know, and so, I mean, so some of those just, they sound fantastic and they just add mm -hmm. more and more to that theme. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what are your guys' thoughts? Are you going to overrule me again or what's, what's going on? So you alluded to the fact that there's all these different expansions on Kickstarter. So I ordered the Devil Boy expansion. It's being shipped here. Hopefully get here in the next few weeks. Um, I also ordered the Octune Cthulhu uh, scenario pack. Mm -hmm. Um, there's also a Hawk du Guard or something. I don't know. There's a whole series of them. And th that last one that I mentioned, Point du Hawk is actually what it is. Um, that one has a whole different scenario to it entirely with new mechanics, uh, a whole new like mystery side to mm -hmm. it. Super excited for that. Um, I, I think they added more theme to it by adding these different layers and different expansions you can add onto it. You mentioned that a little bit. 
I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it, and I think it would add so much more. We've only tapped maybe the first 10% of this game's theme, mm -hmm. you know, just by playing those first few scenarios. I, I think there's a lot more to add. I gave it a two, but I'd be willing to go lower because I've overruled you twice, so <laughs> maybe Eric can be our tiebreaker again. See, I, I took the same idea as, like, it, the, this game is built for potential. <laughs> and, Come on, man! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Like, uh, and, and it, kind of looking at it uh, from the, uh, like, say, Warhammer or uh, War Machine type of universes where uh, you're buying other, like, armies uh, oh, yeah. to, uh, to add to your uh, points or uh, your army uh, as well. Uh, with all of that, like, it's kind of like that idea, but, like, I mean, with this game you have scenarios and adding more scenarios just even adds more replayability, uh, which is another thing that will we'll get into but uh, the th the theme of it just has like this uh, potential to be completely expanded mm -hmm. so uh, I also gave it a two <laughs> so Brian do you stay firm <laughs> how about we meet in the middle one seven five one seven five yeah that's fine yeah. one seven five guilted us into it <laughs> okay and uh, easy to learn. Um, so I was the one that probably spent the most of the time reading the rule book, so I'll go ahead and take this one. And that makes anything harder to learn. <laughs> so I might have a selective memory. That is the running joke every time. <laughs> I learn a game for these jokers. Um, it was a very complex rule book, but once you get down to the core of gameplay, it's fairly simple, you know. Um, I don't know, maybe I could put out a how to play the game in the future, but there are a lot of corner case scenarios that you really have to think about and, and some interesting wording to a couple of lines as well. I was talking to uh, Axel from Devil, P Devil Pig Games and they're going to put out a new, new rule book, a new version, onto the Board Game Geek website. Um, he didn't give me a timeline, but he said they're working on that. So that might shore up some of the, the issues that we had. But the rule book as is was somewhat complex to get through, and it was further perturbed by the number of icons that you had to learn, you know, not only for the terrain, but as well as each of the units, um, as well as, well, how, how, do the, how does the searching action fit in, you know? How do these spells work? How, you know, there was just all of these different corner cases where it seemed like, if they could just have an example that's very streamlined, you can go through that and then add the layers on as you go. Um, but So I, I actually gave it a .25 out of 1 because I found it somewhat difficult to read through. Um, and they even had additional rules about building your armies inside the scenario pack, which seemed like that would actually go in your rule book, not your scenario. So it was just very confusing for me. Uh, I'll jump in second. I don't know if you actually looked at the rule books or not, but like I, I, You were saying that you might like uh, Record a video on how to play. I mean you might as well record a video on how to read the rule book um, Like the, the rule book was divided very awkwardly uh, mm -hmm. But like like you said, you know once you actually got into the gameplay and, and knew uh, you, it, it got rolling um, but also like like looking for uh, like trying to uh, define icons and everything, uh, or specific rules in certain uh, certain circumstances. Uh, you know, just kind of like flipping back and forth through the pages. Uh, I think one was the spells uh, at one point, uh, and uh, you kind of things were very convoluted and weren't really well explained. So mm -hmm. it it was uh, it was hard to uh, very hard to to uh, read and comprehend without uh, having to flip back through like three or four different pages so mm -hmm. uh, I think the rules were were it was a very high barrier of difficulty getting into but uh, like we said once you actually get into it it, it starts rolling uh, mm -hmm. so yeah. and that's where I mean if you're familiar with Heroes of Normandy, Memoir 44, a lot of similar battle games mm -hmm. a, a lot of those things are fairly intuitive yeah. Right. So, you know, you understand troop movement, you understand a range, you understand line of sight. Um, so it's more of the very specific, like you guys mentioned, spell cards. Or not spell cards, but spell 
shits, I guess. But like a lot of that stuff, you know, that, that factors in to you know those specific instances. Mm -hmm. All right, tell me about replayability. What do you guys think there? The total for oh, total for easy you to learn. Give it a point two I gave it a point two five. I, I agreed with that. Uh, it's point two five. It was. I, I said point five, but that was merely. <laughs> Because I like to be different, I guess. Uh, that is um, hilarious. I, I just figured, you know, like once you get over that barrier of entry, it's fairly intuitive. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, okay. Point five. Point five. <laughs> Point Got Ryan. Another one. <laughs> I don't even know why we're taking your scores. You didn't win once. <laughs> Not once. I won where it counts. <laughs> Dear. All right, replayability. What do you guys think out of two? Um, for me, I think it was a very, it has a very high replayability. Uh, the oh, scenarios, yeah. uh, I mean, you have several different scenarios that you can run through, as well as just like pitting armies against armies, uh, just doing point battles. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, I mean, with all the expansions that are coming out. And like, the overlays. Oh, uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, you can, uh, so for me, it has a very high replayability. Um, it wouldn't be one of the games that. Uh, I'd initially be like, oh, let's do this, and, you know, right away, you know. Um, but, like, you know, if I had that certain group that likes these kind of games, it, it'd be like, all right, let's do this one again, you know. Um, so, personally, I gave it a 1.75. Nice. Out of two, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Making no, out of one. 175% <laughs> of it's been so cute. <laughs> what, what are your thoughts? I was hoping you would go first. I was really hoping you would go first. Ah, all right. I nominate Brian. So, um, I'm not really a war gamer sort of person, uh, but I see its merit and its funness. But the thing that cuts down on that for me is its maximum three players. Right. You know. But this does stack with the existing Heroes of Normandy, so potentially it would be five players now, mm. right? But I don't own Heroes of Normandy. May, uh, I'll get there one day. You know, mm. make it five players. Oh yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so I, I gave it one out of two um, because of the limited number of players, but it almost has to be. I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like you can't play this game with seven players, I don't foresee. I mean, that would just be chaos. Yeah. Um, but it was a lot of fun and with the layers of expansions, you know, that we talked about and the different ways you can set up the map so you can have different search icons in different places. I mean, it's different every time you, mm -hmm. you play it. So. And you said one? I gave it one, but I'm rethinking it now. I'm going to go 1.5. All right. Well, you said one, one and a half-ish. You said 1.75. Yep. I'm going to put my vote in towards one and a half. Similar reasoning, you, you do have that player cap. Mm -hmm. But if you just have a couple guys, like you can easily plan a game day around this. Oh, and true. if you're a war gamer, if you like Heroes of Normandy, you already have someone you're playing a two-player game with. Yeah. If you like Memoir 44, that's also a two-player game. So this game fits the niche fantastically. Mm -hmm. So if you like this style of game, you're used to playing two, three-player games. Yeah. Um, and then like this just it's it's a reinvention of. The genre essentially by saying, "Hey, let's take World War II, let's take Cthulhu, throw them in a blender, and have fun." Um, so I'd yeah. say let's let's draw that line to one and a half. That's, That's a my smoothie proposal. I would not drink. Oh, I would totally like drink it. that smoothie. All right, so that gets us to. All right, so we give Shadows over Normandy an eight out of ten. Uh, right about now, you could pick it up just about anywhere. So, mm -hmm. cool stuff, miniature, wherever you want to go. Local family game store. Hashtag truth. Neighbor's closet if they're a gamer. True, 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 true. All right, and that's all from Gamer's Remorse. Uh, this is Shadows Over Normandy with an 8.0. And that's it from us. For talking. Welcome back to I'm Gamer's just, Remorse. Uh, Today, Brian buys a board game. What? He, he plays Let's games? Let's review that. It's exciting. That's like the 
mythical, good mythical warning. Like Brian Myers, Brian's a board game. Let's Talk review that. Take <laughs> okay, heavy game of thunders. Let's review that. There you go. Oh. You guys ready? You guys ready? Marshmallow, 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 <sighs> watermelon, Unique watermelon. New York. Unique New York. Unique New York. Was I supposed to hit record? Just kidding. Balls! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>